Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amobi Kugo, back again with my guy, Elf. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by a very special guest, Jamaican international, NWSL champion, and current AIK midfielder, Chinyele Asher. Uh, we're going to be getting to know all about her, talk about her playing career, and learning about some of her off-the-pitch endeavors. Uh, Chinyele, how are you doing today? I'm doing swell. Thank you. <laughs> well, first and foremost, thank you for coming on to the podcast show. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, really appreciate it, considering uh, the time difference and everything. <laughs> oh, good. Um, <laughs> Glad to be here. I'm I'm staying up for the reggae boys. They're playing in a in an hour, or so or okay, perfect. <laughs> so let's get right into it. We start the show off like we always do. We we uh. L, give us the rundown. I, I'm keeping score this this year. So right now we're both at zero. But give us the All rundown. Right, Let's okay. get Chinyo on board. To start. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So if you listen to the show, then you know we love to play an icebreaker game called Two Truths in the Cap. So this is where our guests would tell us three facts about themselves. Two will be true, one will be a lie, and a Moby and I have to guess what the lie is. So, like Moby said, this year we're keeping score officially, so we're zero zero. Yeah. Um, so, hopefully, you can get some points on the board. So, Chinyelu, whenever you're ready. Okay, two truths and a cap. Okay, um, one. I was a junior Olympian in track and cross country. Two. I am left-handed and right-footed. Three, I've played in four different leagues in the world. Oh, she came prepared. I'm going to go with Junior Olympian. <laughs> junior Olympian. Uh, see, this is where I don't want to leave myself on the wrong foot. The second one, what did you say for the second one again? Left-handed and right-footed. Left-handed, right-footed. That is plausible. Left-handed, right-footed. Uh... But it looked like she was reading from a notebook and it looks like it's on her left side. So I'm going junior Olympian as well. That's the cap. Okay. Both of y'all are wrong. <laughs> and ah. I am left-handed and left-footed. Ooh, okay. I'm lefty over here, a dying breed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm a lefty, but I'm like, I play sports on my right. So See, no, I don't get them. Yeah, I just, I just knew you, <laughs> you can't claim left. Team. People claim lefty. You gotta be left and left to claim it. You know. Okay. I just knew you were a junior Olympian in soccer and not track and cross country. I ain't no junior Olympian in soccer. What you mean? Mm. <laughs> okay. No, I used to be running back back in the oh, yeah. day. I almost Making did that in college, actually, instead of playing. So what what yeah, events did you do? Play. Uh, distance. So I did mile, two mile cross country. Huh? Yeah, I know, right? For fun? <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh. then it yeah, then it wasn't respect. fun anymore, and then I switched back. But, <laughs> but yeah, that okay. was I think my West African side uh, kicking in because I just thought I was a sprinter, and then I got last in like my first 100 meter dash, and my coach was like. We're gonna put you in the eight hundred in the mile. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> okay, so you talked a little bit about heritage. You talked a little bit about you know your um, history with track and field. But when did you fall in love with soccer? Um, I would say when I was probably when I was at like eight, seven or eight. Um, my dad, who's Jamaican, um, I have an older brother um, among some other older siblings, but my older brother. He kind of forced, no, I don't want to say forced, that sounds a little aggressive, but like, you know, it's kind of a cultural thing for like, you know, my dad to get him to play. Um, and so they would always just be in the backyard training or, you know, we'd go to my dad's like, you know, league games or like pickup games, Sunday games, all that stuff. Um, and then when my, when I kind of got old enough to just kind of run around, I don't know, I was really like hyperactive kid and always wanted to be outside and stuff. I would go and while they were training, I was like a, a human cone, like for my brother to like work on his dribbling and like moves and all that. And like, once I, I don't know, just started to get a feel for it. I like wanted to play. 
Um, and I like forced my mom to get me onto like a, a, rec, a co-ed rec team. And um, she was actually the first person to like really knock the ball with me because <laughs> my dad didn't really take me seriously at the time. But um, then uh, we kind of dragged into a game and he's like, okay, like, you know, this girl, she got a little something, something like, you know, we got to bring her under the wing. Can't have her out there repping the Asher family name, you know, looking a fool. So I started training more seriously with my dad and my brother and just kept going. Nice. So when did you like officially like go on like a, like a youth soccer team and stuff like that? Or was it just like training with your brother and your dad? Um, I think when I was nine was like my first travel team or like my first real team where I went and tried out and, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and then from then, I mean, I'm from the DMV area, hella Caribbean, hella African, a lot of that whole diaspora is there, especially like in the football scene. So I'd be on my club, but I'd also a couple of days a week be playing with my dad, my brother and, you know, older Jamaicans, like getting that like pickup, you know, environment. So once that started to combine, I, I started to really get better and enjoy it even more. No, I love that. You know, you talked about the DMV and it's like natural me- melting pot. Talk about your own history. You know, obviously you're a Jamaican international, uh, you know, offline. We talked about your name having some Nigerian roots, but you're also Cameroonian. So talk about uh, yeah. Your, yeah, your, your heritage. Yeah, no, my name definitely flags a lot of people, even... Um, when I was, when we were getting ready for the World Cup, like on Twitter, like so many like Nigerian people would message like, or tweet at me like, hey, like what's this girl doing? Like with, you know, or where are you from? Or why aren't you this and that and all that? Um, yeah, so wait, sorry, what was the actual question? How did I like get involved or like- No, just uh, talk about you, you know, your, your history, your ethnicity and, you know, being sure. Jamaican and Cameroonian and all that. Yeah, um, okay, so my, my dad is Jamaican. Um, he came to the States to play ball in college. He came actually first to play at Maryland and then he transferred to Howard um, back when they were, you know, pretty, pretty golden, you know, back in that time. Um, and he met my mom in the DMV area too. Uh, my mom, she's Cameroonian. She's actually mixed. Um, so her, my grandmother is Canadian. My grandfather is Cameroonian. That's kind of where I get my my freckles from and my curly hair when they're not in these um, twists. But um, they moved to Cameroon um, and she grew up there. And she's a brainiac, probably the smartest person I'll ever meet. And she got an academic scholarship to study in. Um, where did where did she go first? She like jumped around a little bit in her studies, but I know they, they met in like a summer school, like she was taking some higher level, like biology classes and they met in like summer school. Um, That's kind of how we are there um, in that area. Um, And yeah, I mean, just growing up in that area, I I never really felt like I was in the States in my house. Mm -hmm. Like it was just, you know, very very cultured <laughs> from from head to toe from from brick to brick so um yeah no, that's amazing so technically you could you could you're eligible to play for four different countries the show enough um and a lot of people ask me that too like oh you know cameroon you know they go to the world cup pretty consistently or canada blah blah, blah. but um i don't know i mean jamaica like my Jamaican heritage like that's that's my football like I learned every, everything that I I mean even now like you know my dad still kind of looks over my my game films and and all that like I've learned everything from him and just like I, I've that that's like my connection to that that side of me and like playing with um you know the other like the the Jamaican community in that area like that's how I learned like my patois that's how I learned like you know just like the football culture that's all Jamaican and so when um but I never really like thought about national teams or I don't know I never really thought about that I just kind of like kept my head down and just you know was just playing and um they're also like especially in that area like I just there weren't any like role models or like there there weren't any like images where I'm like oh oh, yeah like 
I can go play for a national team or like this, this, and this. Cause I, I wasn't an ODP and I wasn't on the best club team, you know, and uh, I just kind of kept pushing my level with each level and, you know, was excelling. And um, my dad, when I was in school, I went to Purdue first. Um, he called me one day. He was like, oh, you know, would you be interested in playing for Jamaica? I'm like, they're U20s. And I was like, oh, like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, and I got like an invite to camp. Uh, I think, what was it at the time? It, it was some, I don't know if it was, I think it was like, U20, probably the World Cup qualifiers or some sort of like Caribbean tournament that we did not advance from, but um, had had camp, got selected for that tournament and was just in the system since then. And like, it really took, I mean, it <laughs> looking back on what the program was at that time, I mean, it was much more of a hot mess than sometimes it is right now. But I just kind of, it sounds so cheesy, but like, it took one camp for me to realize, you know, we have so much talent. If we have oh. infrastructure, if we have money, if we have resource, we have support. I was like, we, we could really do something here. And I, it, I just really fell in love with that idea and just like the culture the vibes. And like, that's something that I wanted to stand behind. Nothing with like the politics, none of this, none of that. But I was like, this feels like home and I want to come, come home or come back, you know? Um, and sure enough, I mean, we kind of kind of went there eventually. So, no, that's what it's all about, you know, to be part of something like be part of that change and like what what you all have done for Jamaican Women's Federation and team is uh is amazing to see. I know you guys did the World Cup, um, but you talked about being from the DMV. We've had a lot of guests from the DMV uh, on the male okay. side, but you're okay. one of the few people few women that we've had from the dmv so this is your chance to it's actually the first really the first okay yeah oh honored yeah this is your chance to state your case when it comes to dmv youth talent and like being a hotbed for you know women's soccer okay what you saying um what am i saying i'm probably the worst then to be the first on on this subject because i am like really disconnected from that i mean i feel like I know more about the men than the women. Cause like, that's just how I was like, what I was raised around. And like, for me, like, you know, like going back home, I, I didn't really have that much of a network for like women, like playing, mm -hmm. um, that could be more so me and like who I am or just kind of help like the cookie crumble sometimes. But, um, I definitely think that there's talent. Um, and I think it, I think it's there. I don't know. I don't have a good case right now, but That's all good. Uh, yeah, but um, no, this, this past year, actually, um, I was doing my, my B license course through the league and it was the first time um, cause I haven't really been home, home, like, and playing as a pro in like a long time. Or I haven't been like home um, I, cause I've just been playing like in other places, all that stuff. Um, but with my course and having to like go out into the community and like, you know, interact with clubs and like go here and go there. It was like the first time in a while that I could kind of like get a scope of what, where we were at, especially yeah. like, um, you know, players of color, or, like what, what good clubs are, this and that. And like, I was definitely impressed with uh, the quality for sure. And I feel like it's grown so much more than, you know, the last time I was there, you know, at that age. So um we we got we got players we got players all over the place okay. we got players in the in the league you know uh we got players on the national team you know um for the u.s for other for other countries like we definitely out here but i don't know maybe we, we need to rep ourselves more it's always okay. like cali it's always oh because cali got the talent Cali got the talent. All right, I got a follow-up question for that because you talked about, you know, growing up playing with your brother and, you know, more boys. And then now you, you got your, you're pursuing your, your coaching badges from a youth development perspective as, as a, as a woman, do you recommend, or are you against them? Like young women playing like with boys growing up? Cause like my sister growing up, my dad put her on the boys team until she was like eight. And then at that point it was like, uh, my sister was like, I want to play with, you know, people that I can hang out with. Um, 
<laughs> do you think what what's your like stance on that? Hmm. Um, that's a tough question. Where is it? I mean, I as long as there's like a is there as long as there is a balance, like I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think even like when I even as a pro, when I go home and I need to train, I like having access to both environments because I get two different things. So I like playing with women at at a at the same quality, and I like playing with men who can like really push me and get a lot of things that sometimes you can't get in other environments. So I think um, the same thing when you're you know developing at a young age, but also it, it also depends on like what your resources are. For a lot of people, like, you know, myself included, like, okay, are there good, um, you know, female clubs or girls clubs, like, in the area that can, like, push you? Because you really need that. If not, then, like, okay, maybe you do need to go with a boys club, you know, and kind of get that um, that balance. Um, And so that you can still have that, like, developmental push, but you can still have, like, the other part of the game that's really important for you to nurture, like, you know, the joy, the the camaraderie, all that stuff that you can't really get um, with a boys club. Cause it's all about like your community, you know, and, um, and like creating an environment that like you, you feel you're a part of. And um, that's hard to gain if you're, you know, if you're doing that with, with the boys club, it's also hard to gain if you're like, you know, a different, from a different culture, you know, like the, those are like some of the, some of like the variables that can affect like your relationship with the game, your development, um, as you go. So it just kind of depends on. No, I appreciate you sharing that. That's a good, that's good insight. So for you, when did you decide to go full in on soccer? Cause you talked about your, you know, mm. your track career, you, you, you were at a high level with that. What, what made that decision? What was like the aha moment? Um, honestly, like I started losing. <laughs> no, but for real. Um, I'm, I don't know why my parents allowed me to do this, but I'm very grateful that they did. Um, there was like a pivotal moment with club, uh, where I had to choose between sports or it was at that, I forget what, what age it was, but it's kind of the age where you're like, all right, are you trying to do this in college? Like, okay, you need to go all out with this team. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had gotten a new coach and he was like, you're not allowed to do both. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take my show on the road. I don't know who I thought I was, but you know, my parents supported that. And I just took a few years off of playing. Um, But while I was doing that, I was still going to play pickup with my dad and like, you know, I kept like my touches going, like my, the things that made me like what I think, you know, a unique player. Um, and then I think around like, like junior or high school, honestly. Um, so you got back in late. Then. Yeah. Real, wow. real. Late. Um, and I was like, actually, I think I'm gonna, um, I want to, you know, play in college and, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. My dad always jokes and says like, I'm like the luckiest, like unlucky person. Um, just sometimes like things just kind of like fall into place for me, but I got back into a travel team um, and I signed with the school like my senior year. And it was, even that was like random. Like I, my club team wasn't the best. We weren't terrible, but like no one, no big schools were trying to come watch us play. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of how it was. Um, shout out to Free State though. Oh, always rep you guys. Now Maryland United. Um, but yeah, there was like a rally showcase. And um, at that point I kind of just settled on like walking on to a school. Um, Cause I mean, the college, like you having to email coaches and like that yeah. stuff was so stressful for me. Um. And so I said, okay, well, I'm either going to, you know, go to a good academic school and like, try, you know, walk on, try out or, you know, do a little research, see if we're playing any good teams because good schools will come watch them play and then like really try to make sure that I play well that game. So don't recommend that strategy, but that kind of worked for me. Um, the Purdue coach, the head coach at the time was like walking by my field and I did something tricky I don't know to get out of like 
some uh, two players and he he like saw like the brochures i don't i don't know if they do they still do brochures at um yeah, <laughs> now, now they got all like the stats all right probably not well we have brochures and and so. <laughs> <laughs> we had brochures and he looked at my brochure or whatever we had and it was like oh like this girl's a senior like she's definitely with the school already but let me call and ask and i was like i am free yeah. <laughs> for business uh so pick me up so that's kind of how that that's amazing because I know with uh, women that you, you usually uh, commit early, like freshman, sophomore year in like most cases. Very early. They, it was just really random. Like the um, right at that time, they had just, I don't know, like released a couple full ride players randomly or like, I don't know what the situation was. I, don't, mm-hmm. I didn't ask questions, but <laughs> scholarship had opened its doors. And I was like, I will walk in. Thank you. Um, and it just, it literally just like happened like that. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> so with, with your father going to, uh, you know, Howard and then like having that story to run, you know, shout mm-hmm. out to Howard. And I know yeah. the coach Philip Jobs bringing the program back. Uh, was that They're any consideration for you? Are you? Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'm cool with uh, Joe. That's my guy. Uh, oh, okay. So when it comes to uh, like during your college recruitment process, did you ever consider you know attending an HBCU, walking on there? Any? Yeah, I I did not, to be honest, uh-huh. and Frank um, definitely didn't consider Howard. I wasn't considering any school within like Maryland. I wanted to oh. like hit the road i wanted to leave i wanted my own stomping ground um and yeah i'm I'm gonna be honest like i yeah an hbcu like it wasn't even a thought for me but not because you know i was trying to run away from hbcu and not not, nothing like that at all like i think Mm -hmm. if i was just going for academics i would definitely consider that um like my sister went to spelman like i was all you know all about those vibes but um when you look at like the sport you know and like if if the the level isn't there yet and so that's one of the main reasons why it wasn't really on my radar for me um and yeah that was that's kind of but I also like was in a beggars aren't choosers kind of (laughs) kind of um point also so I mean I uh, yeah, I was just kind of rolling with things, but um, I definitely love the direction that, you know, a lot of athletes are going with right now. And I feel like that's really pushing the profile of these schools as like places of, um, you know, like a good academic home, but also like an athletic, like, you know, trajectory too. Perfect. So say we give you the, your head of uh, NCAA um, <laughs> soccer and mm. And talk about you know how can we get HBCU soccer back on the map? What what would you? What's your course of action? Jeez. Um, I'm not really sure. I whatever whatever engages more youth athletes. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it has to start at the lower level, like. I'm sure so many people don't even know all the HBCUs, you know, even like the black people, you know what I'm saying? Like, or no one even like has that as an idea. Maybe if you're like, Oh, okay. Like as an afterthought, but like, I don't, and I'm speaking out of a little bit of ignorance. I don't really know what type of like exposure is going on, but I know just from my own experience, like I, I don't think I ever saw a coach, you know, from HBCU, like, or like, I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I'm just saying, like, I don't know what, what type of like dynamic that is in trying to like increase their engagement. Um, I just saw, I don't know if it was from your platform or someone else, or maybe someone that you guys work with too, but like the HBCU ID camps. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's right. That was, is that like new? Yeah. So they had their first camp uh, a couple weekends ago out here in Atlanta. Okay, so that was their first camp? Yep. That's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need more of those things. Um, Also, just, like, growing growing the game, like, like, amongst Black culture. Like, I know there's a lot of, like, organizations and platforms doing that, but that's, like, just not happening, you know? So we need more of that. And 
um i don't know man that like we could like open a whole like pandora's box about this subject because it's also like okay it's not just the hbcu's responsibility it's like a lot of other issues that um can kind of impact like the minority involvement in 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 soccer and football you know and how, what that looks like the demographics of our national team and what that looks like you know so it's kind of all connected but for the schools, I would definitely, I would run some more of those camps. I would go to more schools. I'd be a part of like more clubs, organizations, more grassroots things to really make that more of a common thing that, you know, kids are seeing. No, that's real talk for us. <clears throat> like uh, Coach Sanders, Dion, um, one thing that he mentioned mm-hmm. while he was in his recruiting was like, you know, most HBCUs aren't even like going to offer a kid because they think there's no chance of them getting the kid, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like they're setting the bar low, you know? So if you set the bar low, you're not going to achieve what you want to achieve. So, yeah. you know, taking the chance to just, you know, offer a kid, you know, go out, recruit, offer offer kids that you think you may not get, you'll be surprised, you know? Yeah. So, like, I mean, look at what yeah, Jackson That's so true, though. Like, they're getting five-star, yeah. four-star recruits out of high school. So um, if that's part of the exposure piece. Like, yeah. you know, there may be kids that don't even, they may not be, you know, hundred percent familiar with an HBCU, but you go mm-hmm. and show them the culture. Um, and it may be something that, that attracts them. So you got to take that chance. That's a really good point. And also that like whole uh, story um, with, with Deion Sanders, like even for me, like that kind of like, was like a light bulb moment. It was something really simple, but I'm like, wow, you know, if, if a good coach is there and if they create the right environment, like anybody can, can reach like, like their professional goal or whatever, like their goal is. And so sometimes people just abandon that whole thing because they assume no one really wants to invest. So I guess that would be like another thing too. Like, I love that that happened and that kind of set a standard that no one thought about. Straight up. Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talked about going to Purdue and then you, 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 you went to Louisville as well. Um, talk about, you know, from someone that maybe wanted to follow in your footsteps, what did, what did it take to succeed at, at that level? Hmm. In college? Yeah. Um, uh, hmm. What does it take to succeed? I think one important thing that I learned and I still abide by in my career right now is you have to take responsibility for your development and like, don't assume that, you know, it's going to be given to you where you go. Um, Now, sometimes people get that added bonus of going into a program that creates that. But even then, like, that's too comfortable, you know? Um, So I know even for me, I mean, I had a, I had a sophomore slump year is what I would say. Like I had a really good freshman year, surprised myself. I didn't even expect to play or, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. I, I don't know anything. I'm like, you know, I don't, know how many like college games I even went to watch like women's soccer you know so you know I went in I exceeded my own expectations and then my but I didn't really do the work that or I didn't continue the work that got me there um on my own and I kind of experienced that slump my sophomore year didn't play as much you know you know got not as much like consistent playing time and this and that and like I had to really be humbled um and and be reminded of like you know, what it takes to separate yourself from everyone else consistently. And um, if you don't, you you just kind of flatline um, in terms of your development. And so, yeah, that's that's what I would say. You oh, that's have a, to... That's a gem. That's yeah. a gem, for real, for real. Um, <laughs> someone told me um, a couple of weeks back, you know, as a pro, you got to be personally responsible of your outcome. And when you talk about that, you know, development, um, yeah, you can have a good environment. You can have coaches that, you know, are, you know, have running good training sessions, but at the end of the day, what are you doing, you know, 24 seven to help you um, continue to develop and perform at a high level? 
Um, and then obviously you went pro straight overseas. You didn't want to stay home when it came to the DMV. You didn't want to stay home when it came to going pro. I didn't so, <laughs> talk about going overseas straight, straight. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, I, I mean, what do you want me to say? I, I, I didn't enter the draft again. I mean, I feel like I was such a, uh, an infant when it came to like thinking of what comes next. Like I just kind of kept walking and no one really was there to like, okay, like these are your options. Like you're a baller, like this, this, and this, I just kind of like finished. I'm like, well, um, what, what do we do now? Or yeah. what is an agent? And what are the, um, but no, so a friend slash coach that I, uh, met during my time at Purdue, um, he is one of those people that like knows everyone and a coach of a team in Kazakhstan <laughs> had contacted him because they needed, they, they're like a consistent like champions league team they're, they're actually pretty good um and they, they normally reach like round of 16 um pretty consistently every, every year but um yeah they just needed a, a a center mid that had a u.s passport to go play in these games because their midfielder got injured and the qualifiers were in ireland or somebody sent me something he's like oh like i know someone and that someone was me and he's like Ginny, like you trying to go i'm like yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> um champions league yes um especially since i you know my resume is blank at this point like for my pro phase of my life and it was just for the duration of champions league so seemed seemed pretty pretty good and i left and went and had my first experience yeah Kazakhstan. So, yeah, Kazakhstan. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I had definitely had to look at it on Google Maps and say, okay, where am I really going? Um, but I didn't really spend as much time there anyways, because we were in Ireland for a decent chunk of time playing our qualifiers. And then um, then we went back to Kazakhstan. I think I played, I don't know. Did we even have a league game? I don't even know. I think it was done by the time I got there, but we had like home and away games. Um, we played like PSG, we played Verona. Um, so it was a pretty travel full yeah. time. <laughs> so, I want to back up yeah. one second. Um, you were talking about like you didn't declare for the draft and stuff like that. Um, and we see, we actually we've seen it this year with like me official um, deciding to go to Tigres instead of playing for Orlando. Um, yeah, starting to that see was pretty badass. Exercise their their options. So I love um, that. Yeah. So like, yeah. T- t- tell me about like your reaction to that. Like, how do you feel about you know seeing more players kind of exercise that option to like, I don't have to go just because I got drafted. I don't have to play here. Yeah. And I can spare my. Well, no, I thought that was dope. I thought that was yeah. Um, that was really cool. I was actually just on their, the Tigres Instagram yesterday, just like, I don't know, checking it out too. Um, Cause they have another Nigerian forward there uh, playing. Um, but I, I think that's awesome. I think anything to expand the narrative of, you know, the different paths to be a top pro is awesome. I feel like nobody should be limited. And I don't think, um any of that like media and propaganda anything that like limits that <laughs> anyone who wants to challenge it i'm i'm here for and i love it so if you're a baller you're a baller anywhere so i hope she has a good season for sure so what's the first thing you do when you you know you get to a new country cuz you've played in you know, multiple <laughs> countries like how do you adjust you know what's like what what do you do hmm um well i sleep normally first (laughs) sleep comes first uh just kidding no sometimes i think like when i was in norway i had to i played like 90 minutes the next day and i was like okay we are we are here in norway (laughs) got it um i don't yeah i i normally like i i try to go out on my own and like explore the town you know check the vibes you know get my get my senses going um yeah, I 
I don't, I don't know. I. Do you have a favorite like city you've played in, or like club you've played for so far? Without hurting uh, anyone's feelings. <laughs> Honesty is the biggest gift. Okay, so <laughs> I, I mean, Santa Fe and in Colombia, like, will always have like such a big chunk of my heart. So I have to. Uh, that was, I think, that was my best pro experience was playing there. Right, the best food too, right? Definitely best food. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like best, such a vibe. Like, but yeah, best dancing, best best everything. The training so good, and like I'm I'm such a training person. Like I love I love to train, and I love I'm like you know getting there to like get some passing games before training, or like I'm juggling after training. I'm like that person. I I sometimes do the most. Um, and that was like that culture on that team was like, oh, like I'm really amongst friends right now. Like, you know, we're we're just vibes the entire time. And we had a really good team. We had a lot of like national team players um, who are, I think they're in Spain or in this and that now. But we we were pretty good. Huh? That's, that's respect. That makes me want to plan my trip to Colombia even more now. Ooh, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's I want to go back too. So talk, talk about your upcoming season with AIK. I know some people will say we'll get the pronunciation wrong. Some people I know. Say I, yeah. I've been meaning to get it right too because I'll even um, like even here like because oh, I'm still having to get some of my like migration stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm a player for AIK, and they're like, who is that? And I'm like, <laughs> ah, I don't know either. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean we. This is like our second week of preseason. Um, definitely feels like a preseason, you know, those uh, exhaustion, uh, fatigue vibes. But no, I'm, I'm really excited. Like we, we don't have all of our players in yet. Um, we have, I think, one who's in the Asian Cup right now and some people that are coming back from injury or, you know, COVID regulations, all that stuff. But um, it's going to be an exciting year. I think they added... Uh, I think there's 14 teams this season, um, the most that they've ever had. So a lot of games. Um, my year personally will have a lot of games, <laughs> adding that with Jamaica and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but I've heard my my former teammate with the Spirit, um, Julia Rotter, she, she plays with the Swedish national team, and she had really good things to say about the league. And this club that I'm on specifically, this is their – second season um in the top i, I can't even say it almost been in there <laughs> in the top league that was Benson or whatever yeah. right uh yeah something something of the spensons or something <laughs> um but i if i feel like we're gonna have a really strong team and i'm i'm excited to play for them for sure okay well great podcasting because you segued us to our next question about <laughs> washington spirit <laughs> Um, talk about that, you know, winning the NWSL championship, despite, you know, all the, all the stuff that was going on behind the scenes. Yeah, it, it was a long year. It was definitely a long year. Um, but it, it felt like a story, um, like a fairy tale ending or a storybook ending, mm -hmm. um, happily ever after type, type ending. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just felt like we, we deserved the win. I mean, mm -hmm. we just had such a crazy ride of a year. Um, one that only brings a team together. Um, I also think like our, t like our, our whole roster is full of ballers. Like I think, mm -hmm. you know, even regardless of all the turbulence and all that, like, you know, we're, we're a really good team and, you know, everybody pushes each other. Um, I mean, I think, I think they had, seven people from the roster go to the the u.s camp recently like that should yeah. speak for itself you know um so yeah it just it just felt right like as soon as i think after we got through the first round of postseason i was like okay like we're gonna win like there's oh, only one so you was that like there. that yeah it just like felt it just felt just right like when you know you know there's, right there's exactly there's there's no other way for this to end than for us to be on yeah. that stage so so with that being said like did anyone like uh, obviously it's like 
weird, but you know, like a 30 for 30 type documentary where you guys filming like behind the scenes of, you know, you guys playing the games and different things going on, or was it just like, yo, we're about our business and we'll just win. We're just about our business, I think. Um, I think there was someone recording for uh, Chris, our head coach, okay. or the one who was our interim head coach, but current head coach yeah. now for them. But um, yeah, we were just, we we just like, we didn't have time to like <laughs> to stand back until it was done. It was like every morning there was like something different or something in the news. Oh, something broke on Twitter. Like, thanks Twitter for being yeah. our closest friend this season. Cause that was how we got most of our <laughs> breakthrough information. Yeah. Um, and then we just, we were all over the DMV. We we're training in Virginia and now we're in, here and now we're in there like it was just so much movement and it was just movement and like football like that's it yeah. and we just kind of kept playing our game and just kept you know together as a team and found ourselves on with, with the gold medal so respect so not sure if you're keeping up or not but any take on the ownership situation and remember earlier you did say honesty is <laughs> hey i'm not with the spirit <laughs> so they can come find me in stockholm if they need to but um i i am i'm not all the way up to date um it last time i checked it did seem that um michelle was on the lead of things which i'm 100 percent here for um i think she really demonstrated like such good character and integrity um, throughout our season. And I think it would be great to have someone who was there the entire, you know, hill and valley journey that we were on. Um, and that just really understands like where we're coming or where the team is coming from. Um, so I'm, I'm very here for that. If it, if they can pull it off, I don't know what's taking so long to be honest, but. I hope it goes through. Racism. Respect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys say racismo, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned that you know that you guys trained in like Maryland and Virginia, like kind of all over the DMV. Was there like a stable mm -hmm. place for y'all to train like consistently? Did y'all have like a training that. facility or anything yeah, like that? Really, that's so Make, it would make sense for that, but no, we really didn't. <laughs> and we, what we thought was our home, it really wasn't. So a lot of times we were played the fool. Um, do y'all ever, a... kick, ever get like kicked off the field, like training? Um, like if another team was like, actually, this is our field. <laughs> no, not not literally. Okay. I would say, yeah. Probably, maybe like spiritually, it felt like okay, <laughs> we should we're, we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> but it, cool. yeah, it's all good, you know. We, we that, rolled like, with the punches for sure. <laughs> that's crazy that like a professional team in 2022, you know, has to go through that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Especially with this kind of going back to the the ownership battle, like Michelle mentioned that she wanted to invest 25 million in like a training facility and stuff like that so like providing stability for the team which mm -hmm. in turn you know you see what louisville is doing you see what you know kansas city's doing yeah only help bolster the league in terms of like infrastructure so like i don't understand why yeah. why it's not like for like, you know? <laughs> the area too like the the area deserves that you know especially like for a women's team like circling back to like, i guess the DMV and, you know, girls and quality level, like, you know, turning this area into like a bigger powerhouse of like product, you know, of like player quality. And I'm like, we need, we need that. We need like a, a lighthouse, like for that. And we have, we have all the goods. We just need someone to help us put it together. All right. One oh, last thing about the spirit before you know, <laughs> transition. Um, so there's some chatter on Twitter that, you know, the spirit should, once all the dust settles, like given, you know, everything that's happened over the past year and the current 
situation that the spirit should rebrand after mm-hmm. the dust settles. What do you think okay. about that? Um, you said, what do I think about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I love I love a good like refresh, re- restart button. Um, and I think, yeah, I think they're they're they've been thinking about it, and I think they have some good people that they've hired recently that will that will do it justice if they actually go through it. Um, but yeah, you could, you could use a little gloss over. Why not? Yeah, a little fresh okay. paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. Um. Well, what was it like playing in a World Cup? Whoa. You, know, you guys got a lot of uh, straight into it. Yeah. What was it like playing in a World Cup? You guys got a lot of support. You know, uh, for what you guys that were able to accomplish. Um, talk about that experience and, you know, setting your sights on the next World Cup, I, I, I presume. Yes, you presume correctly. Um, well, it was all of the adjectives that you can imagine. Um, amazing. It was like breathtaking, honestly. Um, I love... I love playing like for my family and I love having them in the stands and like, I don't know. I, I love, I love the hype of, of a big game and just being able to play, you know, we, I mean, our group was, we had ballers, like, yeah. you know, the country that we played, um, Australia, Brazil, Italy, and, you know, I feel like a lot of people look at that group and be like, dang, like, we got, like, the hardest group. But that made me so excited. And I, I also thought, I think, we, like, we we didn't perform to where we should have. So there's, like, the competitor's experience and there's, like, the, I guess, like, the inner child, Chinny, that, like, really got to see one of her dreams come to fruition, um, which is, like, playing for my country, like, in the world cup like that is the yeah no one could take that away from you no yeah i mean that is like the pinnacle um but also like just being able to like i don't know maybe it's just just me but like i i think i love playing the best against the best players the best teams um because it's just it's like the most motivating experience the most like affirming experience that like all right, like we're here, like we're all here, you know, mm-hmm. like we're all at this level, we're all balling out, like we're we're here and like we can come back also, you yeah. know? Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, I, I, I want it again. Oh, respect I respect that. Back. <laughs> so you talk about, I, yeah. you talk about your performance, like rising to the occasion and like you like, you just get up for those big moments. You know, you've been yeah. pro for quite some time. What was that moment where you're like, oh, whoa, like, Oh, okay, this 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 one's she's really good. Like I gotta up my game, or <laughs> ooh, I didn't know it was gonna be like that. You know, um, I don't. I'm trying to. I don't think I ever got that. I feel like if anything, it was that in my head until I stepped on the on the field and like I'm like, oh, like we're all just we're all playing right now. Okay. Um, and I think also playing um like in college and playing like in a really good, good, um, uh, division or is that what they're called? <laughs> Sorry, it's getting late guys, but the conference. Thank you. Um, it, I mean, like you, you play against like some of the people who become like the Rose Lavelles and all that. So like, as long as you can keep, at least for me is when I, if I keep things into perspective, like it, it, it empowers me as a player, mm-hmm. but, with that said, it doesn't mean I don't acknowledge that someone like Marta is literally destroying everybody or, okay, Sam Kerr just got a hat trick on us. Like, great, you know, or like, that doesn't mean I don't, (laughs) you know, don't recognize that. But um, I would say in the World Cup qualifiers, when we played the U.S., that was like the first time I was like, okay, you know, we might not be playing this game to win or, you know, like that was like the first time I was like, all right, you know, like we are very outmatched and (laughs) I will, (laughs) you know, definitely give y'all that. And okay. You know, 
Um, but I I don't think that'll be the same experience if we play them again this year. Oh no! Nah, as you guys okay. continue to like recruit and put more resources in, I think yeah. you guys gonna, you guys gonna surprise some folks. We have a team already. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, we'll see. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. Okay, so uh, obviously you've had like a unique career. Uh, what advice would you have for younger players? You know, coming up, you know, trying to make it. Hmm. I would say um, to be proactive as early as you can, or like to really explore, like one where where you want the sport to take you, and the different ways to get there. I feel like kind of, I think we touched on it a little bit when you guys were talking about um, like the draft and all that, but Mm -hmm. even at, at a younger age, like, I feel like people see like the UNCs and the Stanfords or like, they just see one way to like get to one place and to be that one person. And like, there's so many different ways to like pursue your passion, I guess. And, and still come out in the version of your, of yourself and the player for, player version of yourself that you want to be like whether that's in school or if that's as a pro like I definitely wish that I put more time into looking into what I wanted and like how I wanted to do that because like you do have a you do there is power in that um and I feel like doing that at a younger age is really uh, beneficial I'd also say um to I mean everyone is different everyone has a different relationship with the game but find whatever it is that like that you enjoy about it and like really hold that and like protect that till the end <laughs> um so i feel like i had about it um i love i just i love like just freedom of play <laughs> like i'm True i won't be in this this year but like in almost every like place that i played at even, I mean, last year, like I was at um, racing for preseason or like anywhere that I go, like I have to get like some pickup in <laughs> mm-hmm. or like if, if that, if there's like something, like if I don't feel like connected or like I have to do, maybe it's not pickup or like there's something, if I'm not like feeling myself, like I have to reconnect and I have to like, it has to be a very free space. And yeah. that gives me joy. Like I love going to like, where I don't know anyone, I won't wear any, any, any labels that indicate that I actually know how to play. I'll just go and play. And then I leave. And I love that. And like, that's that's just like unsolicited, like free. Like I think at, um, at racing, like I literally went on Google maps and like found a park and I like drove by, there was like a rant and I I went to U of L. So like, you know, I kind of knew the area, but I've never been to this area before. There was this, like, like a turf cage just in the middle of, like, you know, the hood of Louisville that I'd never been before. And it was, like, a, a Somalian community there, like, just out of nowhere. And, like, it was at a time where I, like, you know, I wasn't getting a lot of playing time during the preseason or, like, I just, I wasn't feeling it. And that's one of the reasons why I left. But I found that and I, like, for like my last few weeks, like that was like the best playing that I was doing. Cause I just like had that, like that little freedom, you know, and I went, I wouldn't go to any like tackles, no 50, 50, but like I would go and I dribble and do all that stuff. Okay. Um, but that's like for me. So for other people, it's different, you know, but whatever it is that like, that you enjoy, like, cause some people, they might ha- have to like, think about it. Like they don't really, it doesn't come natural. They like forget like why they, they're even playing or what they enjoy. Um, but like you have to keep your hand on that the entire time or else you'll fade with it, you know? No, that's, that's, I mean, that, you hit the nail on the head. That's like, that's <laughs> real talk for real, for real. And I feel like a lot of soccer players, professional athletes to that standpoint, they lose that. And it's like, all right, I'm good. I get paid. Let me just keep playing. And then it affects their performance yeah. and it affects their mental health and it affects, you know, yes. everything else. So, uh, as long as you're not going there, you know, no labels, like crossbar challenge, play people for money, hustling them. <laughs> as long as you're not hustling them, I think that's a vibe, for real, for real. <laughs> that's just me. Don't don't nobody go and get into trouble and say, you know, Chinyelu Asher told them to do that. No, don't. 
but no, nah, but it's, my... it's important because that's what soccer is all about. That free, like you have to be free. And a lot yeah. of coaches now, because of you know Pep and Klopp, and you know they think yeah. they want to be the special one. They spend so much time pattern play and doing this, and yeah. like nah, we need to be able to play and be free and express ourselves. So I love how you you know eloquently put it. I hope so. Thank you. So yeah, we've been talking about soccer, but you, you mentioned sleep. I know you, you said it's something about dance when you were in Colombia, but what do you like to do when you like? When you're not playing. Hmm. Um I guess I'm a regular degular, but <laughs> I <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, last year I I felt like I didn't have a life uh between driving all over the place for <laughs> spirit training <laughs> and doing my B license. But um with the little time that I had to myself um I mean I was back home so I was you know hanging out with my siblings a lot um I don't know I like to uh what do I like to do I was in I was doing like kick like my Thai boxing a little bit okay I like to do some random stuff I don't know I like anime so I'll, I might watch some of that for my mental health okay. um uh here I like I don't know checking out new food spots i link with friends uh i i read no i normally read a lot but i didn't really read too much last year but i brought a lot of books this year so we'll see um i'm definitely gonna try to get back into my art into my drawing okay you know, journaling i don't know I like to do a whole, I like to diversify. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Lefties and art skills, because you yeah. know, I'm a decent artist myself. Kind of out of practice. I'm more. I was say, drop, drop, days, drop but... that IG handle if you've. Uh, you no, nah, I don't have nothing on my Ooh, IG. Where the content at? <laughs> okay, me either. I, 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 I have art that I collect, but not art. That Very I cool. You know? That's a flex, though. That's a flex. Yeah. <laughs> so what is, are, are you binging anything right now? Like, Netflix, Hulu, anything you've been mm, Well, I just started the Perfect Chaos. Yeah, yeah, we already finished um, that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm a nerd, so I, I just finished Attack on Titan. I don't know if we have any anime watchers, but it's I'm a good one. The, I don't watch anime, but I'm familiar yeah. with it. Okay, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm trying to just embrace, you know, all of my, all the sides of me. So I respect. I'm not gonna cheat with that. Um, I'm a monolith. Right. And on my next to-do list is to catch up on Insecure. What? Hold up. <laughs> catch up? <laughs> no. I know. I'm like behind with the season. So how are you staying away from like the spoilers? Or are you uh, just you're not really... I'm, I'm just here. You oh, okay. Know? Tunnel vision. Respect. I'm really good at blocking out noise. Maybe too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but... All right. Fair enough. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. All right, let's get into some rapid fire questions, though, um, since we're kind of on that topic. So on game days, what's on your pre-match playlist? Okay. Um, specifically or generally? No. However you want to. Okay. Uh, well, I uh, definitely have a lot of dance hall. Um, definitely have uh, two, uh, I'll say two, 21 Savage. Um uh those are my the two that i'm like thinking of right now okay. and i'm i'm a i'm a recent key block fan so <laughs> <laughs> my my playlist might be a little trappy that's, that's very <laughs> be like, a little trappy. dance hard or like <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a little mixture of that but you know choosing has, violence for the dance hall keeps it like mellow but that can dance hall can be up too so don't, don't play with that <laughs> <laughs> all right so what's your um I know you've you've played in many cities, but like you probably also, you know, have it had having away games and whatnot. What's your mm-hmm. favorite away city to visit or country that you've played in? Mm. That's a really good question. Ooh. Um okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I 
this is just speaking from the memory of the experience itself, but my favorite away experience was playing at PSG. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of the night. That was just a very fun the night. Day. Day. <laughs> right. right. From start to finish, it was memorable. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what are uh the best food cities to you from where you traveled? Mm, well, it's hard to beat Kingston, first and foremost. Right. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be traveling there in a few weeks. Um uh what can compare to that? I am uncertain. I mean, Bogota, when I was in Colombia, um, love the food there. Very fresh. Um, yeah, I would say those two. All right. Moby, you got some? All right, yeah, here you go. Uh, who's on your five-a-side team? Dang. You about to pull up, you're driving randomly, trying to find a pickup place, and you got five uh, people in the car. Who are you taking with you? Dang, does it have to be anybody? It could be anybody. Your world. My world? I like, am I going for friends? Am I going for... <laughs> However you want to do it. Yeah. Huh? However you want to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I... This is someone that I talk to nonstop. One of my best friends, Tiffany Cameron. I just can see her being in the car with me randomly. Um, she also is a reggae girl who plays on the national team. Um, who else? So I would have um, Modric. I'd have, um, I'm trying to pick some like different people here. Mm, so that's, Three already, so I need two. Do I need a keeper? No, nah, that's five aside. We don't need keepers. Okay, I was, I, you know, I wasn't yeah. sure. We, like five aside, big goals. Uh -huh. We can get a keeper. Um, you know, just sit him somewhere. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, I'm gonna time travel and say prime Ronaldinho. Honestly, maybe even like unprime. He's probably still <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still <laughs> doing, he's still doing it right now. Um, am I missing one more? I need a defender. One more. <laughs> Um, Conte. Oh, okay. Okay, solid, yeah. solid. That's a solid squad. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, what else? All right, you talked about Kingston. Jerk chicken or curry goat? Is it from Kingston? From Kingston. Okay, jerk chicken. Okay, from the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> Like, why do you say if, if it's from Kingston? Like, because the only place I'm getting jerk chicken from is from King from Jamaica. Like, really? It's wild. Like, no, it's like place a different. It's you different. can never replicate it. Not even come yeah. close. I'm not even exaggerating. Because, like, I will, I will try on like all of my hopes and dreams. Like, I will try to like manifest this jerk chicken to be the same, and it's never the same. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I went to Jamaica once and like, yeah, just the food in general, but the jerk chicken. Yeah, yeah you have, have to get it like from the road. <laughs> I'm so serious. Like, as soon as we touch down when I'm there with my dad, like, we make a stop like before we get home, like okay. from the airport <laughs> on the way. It's just, it's different. Um, if we're in the DMV, on that note, it would be curry goat. <laughs> okay, best Jamaica spot in the DMV. Mm. Well, there was a oh, what was it called? There was a place because we knew the cook, but okay. then he left, so I don't think they got the best food in. Oh. <laughs> um. Mm. Well, this is where we go is uh, Carib Express. It's in Laurel. Okay. Or, I don't know. You say or C A R I B E Express. On Main Street, they got a really good variety, and they serve us well. <laughs> well, if you if you want any West African recommendations, the DMV definitely got to check out Bukum Cafe. Yeah, guys up there. Yeah, they got. Yeah, they got Roger Miller in downtown Silver Spring. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah. Good one. Hey. Okay. Uh, Caribbean spot, you know. <laughs> and then, all right, anime top three. Ooh. Okay. Um. 
I mean, you have to say Naruto Shippuden. Like, that's just a classic. Um, I would also say Bleach. And then... This is really hard. Um, Dragon Ball Z not get any love? It's not for me. Ooh. Not for my top three. Yeah, but... I might be, might be past it. I might be Yo, showing my age here. Anime. No, I mean I feel you though. Like that is that is there, but it's not there for me. Yeah. Okay. Personally. Yeah. Does, is Blue Knight considered anime or just cartoon? I don't know. The style is kind of anime ish. It is because that's a classic for sure. Yeah. yeah. Super show. Um. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I'll say Attack on Titan because I just binged that. I have right, to okay. get I, got, I got one more because we didn't ask this earlier. So who was your favorite player growing up? Mm. Or somebody you kind of modeled your game after? Um. So I'm a very like I don't know if this classifies as old school, but like I like man, I'm a city fan, but like I like them when they were trash. Um. So you, and like you're an OG oh. fan. Yeah. Um. But I didn't start like appreciating like watching soccer until I was like thirteen. Okay. Before then, I was like, "Oh, you know, my dad takes the remote and like, oh, why do we always have to watch the ball?" Blah blah. blah. Um, but I love watching Sean Wright Phillips and Rubinho. Okay. I know, like that's he's kind of canceled right now because there's all that going on with him. But uh, I love watching them play, like for sure. Like dribbling, all that stuff. I was like, dang, I'm trying to be like that. So. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Dope, dope. All right. So let's jump into one of our favorite segments of the show um, trending topics. So this is okay. uh, a nice little sip. segment Let me where start I this. Will, <laughs> well, I'll read off some news headlines, some trending topics, if you will, um, from maybe Twitter, just stuff that's buzzing around. Um, <laughs> And you know, Kinyelu and Amobi will give their opinions on these topics using the soccer card system. So, no card is you know I agree with it. I'm cool with it. You know, it doesn't bother me. Okay. Um, <laughs> kids running around upstairs. Um, <laughs> yellow card. So no card is you know I agree with it. I'm cool with it. Yellow card okay. is I can go either way. I'm indifferent. Um, and red card is obviously I disagree with it. You know I'm not cool with that. You know full stop foul. Um, and then you give a short explanation of why you gave it that card. Okay. okay. Wait. You said yellow card is what again? You're indifferent. You can go right. either way. Indifferent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You playing? You playing Switzerland? You like it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So uh, first up, less than seven days ahead of the NWSL season, and there's no CBA in place between the players in the league. So what card are we giving this overall situation? That depends on how I want to take it. Um, I could give it a yellow because I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I could give it a red because that's not okay. <laughs> um, or I could give it a no card because I'm like, yeah, like the players are doing, I think, what needs to be done for some action. Oh. I don't know. It depends on how you want to take it. So if you had to pick one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna pick yellow because I'm not surprised. Yeah, I, I guess I'm going yellow card. Um, you know, it's tough. You know, NWSL is preaching like they're making all these changes, all this like money going in, and then when it comes to like supporting the players, they're not trying to do it. Uh, so uh, yeah. obviously, everything's a business. You know, we have different things that we don't see and then from the player standpoint you definitely got to stand up for yourselves the only thing to say is just stay strong because you know once one person starts like oh we got to play and then that mm. that that strong okay. unit will can start getting some cracks in it and mm. i know firsthand being with mls and how you know mls pa unions uh work so mm. yep what he said so we'll see I, 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 um, so one more 
So FIFA president Gianni Infantino is pushing extra hard for a World Cup every two years, citing more chances for countries to host, qualify, and get money. So he even made like a weird analogy about Africans not having to cross the Mediterranean to search for a better life or some like problematic shit. So <laughs> given the situation, what card are we giving Gianni for his plan of a two year, of a World Cup every two years and the logic behind it? We're giving him a red card. <laughs> Uh, like sounding like uh, Mr. Krabs, honestly, it's just for money, and it completely leaves out the the benefit. I mean, the um, yeah, like it leaves out the the, the player protection, and he's trying to fool us, and it ain't working. Yeah, it's a red card. It's like a it's a it's a battle between they see like all these like UEFA and all these countries that are, are leagues and federations that are able to make money by doing more tournaments. So they want to make money and do more tournaments, but no, nah, the infrastructure is not right. Um, players, it's like a, a get rich quick. Yeah. It's like, trick. And like, that's not how that works. Like you can't just skip over everything else. Like you need those steps. Uh, like <laughs> you have that league, you have country, you got to qualify. Like, so are you going to be doing qualifying every year? Like, what's that process like? So, yeah, it's, it's he forced it. And then on top of that, to add fuel to the fire, like his whole explanation of don't bring us in it. Let's talk about Africa. It's like, don't to cry. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. We good. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, they want to have 40 teams. Try. They want to have, yeah, like, red card, my guy. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna try and rationalize his, his logic with that one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for no for uh, trending topics this week. Senior, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Where can people find you if they want to support all the things that you got going on? Um, you know, if they want to set you up for a pickup when you're back in the states, how can they? How can they get you? You know, to come. Hey, to you, you can find me on IG Chinyelu Asher, uh, Twitter Chinyelu Asher. Hit me up. Follow your girl. <laughs> nah, most definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, really pleasure having you on. All the stuff that you shared. A lot of, you know, practical advice that people can do. Um, but that's our show for this week. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC. And uh, we'll catch you guys at a later time. Cool. Thanks for having me. Nah, most definitely.